now if we rank them in ascending order so that you know the lowest is assigned rank 1 and then the next highest is assigned rank 2 and so on so Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This channel, Everyday Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts related to science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is in continuation of the Advanced Equal 50 series. We are trying to solve 50 Advanced Equal problems on topics like select, basic joins, basic aggregate functions, sorting and grouping, advanced select and joins, subqueries, and advanced topics like window functions and common table expressions. In this video, we are going to solve this question called find the start and end number of continuous ranges and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is our 44th video of this series called find the start and end number of continuous ranges. And if I look at the companies, this question has been asked in. So Microsoft. Let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called logs with one column, log ID, the data type being integer. Log ID is the column of unique values for this table. Each row of this table contains the ID in a log table. We are asked to write a solution to find the start and end number of continuous ranges in the logs table. Return the result table ordered by start ID. Okay, let's go through this example. So here we have various records in the log ID column and here what all consecutive numbers that we have 1, 2 and 3. So for this range, the start Start ID should be 1, end ID should be 3. Now again, there is another continuous range 7 and 8. So start ID 7, end ID 8 and 10 being alone. So start ID and end ID being 10. So that is what we have in our output. So one of the logic to solve this question could be somehow if we can assign the continuous ranges to a certain partition. So for example, 1, 2, 3 becomes one partition, 7, 8 becomes another partition, 10 becomes another partition. If we are able to assign continuous ranges into one particular basket, then our task would be easier. And one of the methods that we can employ is ranking. Okay, let me switch to Excel and try to demonstrate this concept. So here we are just taking some random numbers. So 2, 5, 7, then 9, 10, 11, 12. Obviously, these yellow highlighted are the ones that are consecutive. And then there is another number 15. Now, if we rank them in ascending order so that, you know, the lowest is assigned rank 1 and then the next highest is assigned rank 2 and so on. So now once you have the ranks and if you subtract the number and rank, you are going to get certain numbers. Now, what is happening is that if your you know number increases by one that means it is consecutive rank is always going to increase by one right so rank is increasing by word irrespective of whether the number is consecutive or not so if there is an increase that is nine to one that is plus one four to five again plus one the difference between the numbers is going to be exactly the same until and unless the continuity breaks so from 9 to 12, the difference between number and rank is 5. So if we apply the same logic in our question, then we are able to assign, okay, these 1, 2, 3 can be one partition, 7, 8 can be another partition and 10 can be another. Let's go ahead and try to rank this. So what I'm saying is from this table called logs, let's keep the log ID column and then use the row number to basically rank so row number and then since we are this is a window function over order by log id in ascending order and let's alias this as rank okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so if we look at it, so this is what we have in our output. So these numbers, these IDs are assigned ranks. Now we just saw that if we subtract log ID and rank, we are going to get certain values. So if I go ahead and do log ID minus this row number and let me alias this as, let me just bring it down here as uh, let's say I call this difference. Okay, let me go ahead and run this now. Let's see what do we get in our output. So now if we look at it, so this was ranked 1. The difference is 1 minus 1, 0. This was ranked 2. So difference is 2 minus 2, 0 and so on. So basically if you look at it, right? So same number is assigned to all the consecutive numbers. And then when the continuity breaks and then another continuous range is present, another different set of numbers are assigned. So now once we have this, what we can do is we can save this in a common table expression. So with CTE as and then this entire thing goes into parentheses. So this becomes our common table expression and we learned about common table expressions in our last video. And then what we can do is from this common table expression, we can group by the difference column so group by the difference column and return 
okay so return the difference column and then the minimum becomes the start id so minimum of log id is your start id if you look at our output it should be start id then the maximum of log id is your end id and this should be ordered by start id in ascending order so if let me just drag it down and order by start id okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get still not complete yet yes this says wrong answer because there is one column that is extra in our solution right now but if you look at it we have the start id and end id of all the continuous ranges so 1 and 3 and then 7 8 10 and 10 so obviously in our output we all we need to do is remove this column because this was just for demonstration purposes so if i just remove this part here let me go ahead and run this now okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit this to pass all the test cases so yeah, this is accepted and this is how to do it so yes very tricky question and you have to use some of the logic then how can you find continuous ranges and one of the intuition we just derived was if we assign ranks to consecutive numbers and subtract the difference the difference is always going to be the same and we can use that to basically create partitions here what i did was once we have the similar numbers right so if i run to here once we have this column so you can just group by and find okay what is the minimum and what is the maximum that becomes your start and end so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video